everyone. It's another episode of The Nonprofit Show. We are thrilled that you are here, but I'm even more thrilled because I get to get have one of the rock stars of the publishing sector, Andrea Evans, with us today. She is the publisher of Front Doors Media and the co-founder of the Center for Positive Media. So I can't wait to delve in to this things, exciting things and new doors that she's opening. Um, Andrea, this is going to be a super, super cool conversation because this is at the heart of the success for so many nonprofit events. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say and um, to have you share your wisdom. If we haven't met before, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. My intrepid co-host, Jarrett Ransom, if you've been watching us for the past two days, Bless her heart, she has been at the AFP conference in Las Vegas, broadcasting live, doing our very first remote, and she's exhausted, so we gave her the day off. She didn't get back to our um, home state until late last night, but she'll be rejoining us tomorrow. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without them, we would not be here. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Nerd, Fundraising Academy, the Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Staffing Boutique. We also want to make sure that you know we have nearly 600 episodes from our archives on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, and Vimeo. But wait, there's more. We also just started putting all of our current episodes onto streaming platforms uh, for podcasts. So cue them up wherever you get your content and you can take us with you. Um, it's pretty exciting, but better than anything, the most exciting thing is we have Andrea Evans with us, publisher of Front Doors Media, The Red Book, and the Center for Positive Media. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, wonderful to be here. I'm so excited in the green room chatter. I told everyone that when I see your name pop up as a viewer, a live viewer, I get all excited. And I always have to like step it up. Oh, I love popping in whenever I can. And it's on my calendar every day. And if I, you know, don't have a, a meeting or an obligation, of course. Well, I'm you are, on. you're a rock star. I'm going to brag on you a little bit. You know, Andrea, you're as one of the leaders, leading publishers of a society um, publication, really, you know, the leader in our community, but really one of the leaders in the nation. Talk to us about what, and how you engage with the nonprofit sector, because we're gonna be talking about media partnerships. And so talk to us a little bit about your publications, and then I'd love for you to share with us about the Center for Positive Media, because that's a new endeavor. That is, it's our latest endeavor, and thank you. Well, Front Doors Media is both a print and digital media company, and we have a mission. And the mission um, at the core of it is to share stories of inspiration in our community. We are based in Phoenix, Arizona, and we cover all of Maricopa County uh, when it comes to our editorial. And really our, our way to introduce ourselves <laughs> to nonprofits in the community is through our calendar. We have a very robust um, um, calendar on our website and it, it has, um, you opt in to what type of event that you are looking to promote. So of course it's the, you know, elegant gala dinners, fundraisers, luncheons, um, breakfast events, but also we have a tab for 5K runs and walks and outdoor events. Golf tournaments is another tab as well as community. So when things like the Fiesta Bowl parade um, is in need of volunteers, they can post, you know, that type of activity on our calendar. And so, um, and, and we use that calendar entry system to ask some questions and get some more information about the organizations. Mm -hmm. And we always say that being invited to attend your event is a way for us to get to know your organization. And it always turns into a, a story, a bigger story about what you're about. So that's really um, a, 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 our leading method of getting to know an organization is our online calendar. It's really amazing because as the leader in, in social coverage in the fifth largest city of America in America, 
I would imagine that you are bombarded morning, noon, and night, people pitching you stories, people trying to get into your publication. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that maybe drove a confluence to starting the Center for Positive Media? Absolutely. So we do have a beautiful glossy <laughs> publication called Front Doors Magazine. Our amazing editor in chief is Karen Warner. And she really, you know, we're traditional in the sense that we, um, we have a, a full editorial team and they really do vet the pitches. I am on the editorial board, so I contribute. But I, you know, they're an amazing team of writers and I trust um, them in their decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people, we do put out an editorial calendar. So people do uh, know what to pitch us and when to pitch us, at least for the magazine. But we have a weekly newsletter that is for any breaking news, special announcements, funding um, stories, getting to know new leaders in the community. So we are, we're constantly looking through, oh, I'd say, I mean, on some days there's over a hundred pitches in our um, editor email box uh, to go through. Um, so, so yeah, so for five years, um, I've been the publisher and, you know, we've been building up these things, the calendar, the weekly e newsletter, the magazine, and, um, and during COVID, like most people, my lease was up and so I moved home and was running, you know, my business on Zoom, just as you were starting the show. And I went and looked for new space and it was really difficult. And I know you've probably talked about um, nonprofits and, and uh, the expense of offices and, and all those things, but um, we did finally, you know, rent two desks in a co-working situation. Uh, I knew it wasn't the answer, but it was a short lease and um, it was with another community entity. So it was great. And it got me out of the house <laughs> while yeah. my kids were still on Zoom doing homework. And then I got a phone call um, and I have a video uh, production partner um, called Inspired Media 360 that uh, helps us produce our video series, Front Doors TV. And we got a call to come look at um, a space that somebody had invested in. It's right in the middle of town and we came. Well, it's an old lighting store and it has an old warehouse behind it. And it is perfect for um, filming things and for hosting things. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the, the person who uh, had just bought the building and we said, no, no, we don't want to tell you who else to have over here. We want to be here. And um, Carrie Pena, my co-founder, uh, she named it the Center for Positive Media. And we mean that in every sense of the word. People pull over and come in and go, what does this mean? Like we're trying to sneak some sort of like political agenda. No, every business that's housed in this building and it's a 10,000 square foot building with a fully working uh, studio for filming, uh, green screen, psych wall, everything you can imagine. Um, and every business that was invited into the extra space that we, the two of us did not need, it is collaborating with us. Mm -hmm. So our photographer has moved in that shoots wow. our beautiful covers. Um, the common sense media from um, the Arizona office, you know, the amazing rating system for children and family media, they're um, headquartered here. So it's, it's pretty cool. And um, February was our grand opening and, and it's, it's home. We have a home now. Awesome. I love it. Well, I'm so proud of you. It's really exciting to see. And I think that um, you are in the swim that so many of us are afraid of. Um, we want, we know that we want to get positive media, um, you know, a, attract positive media for our nonprofits or our organizations, our events. And yet there's a lot of fear. And so I'm really interesting, interested in knowing from your perspective, what do media partnerships accomplish? And like, what is the byproduct of all this? So media partnerships, um, I wrote down three key elements that in my mind, when we go and are approached uh, to do a media partnership um, with, with a nonprofit, especially, um, you know, at the, at the core, you're creating awareness of the organization. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, awareness of the, the media company. Um, and all that they have to offer to the community. Mm -hmm. um, 
branding, you know, having a partnership with a media company or a magazine or a newspaper or an online, um, you know, social media, strong social media uh, effort. Yeah. That's a way to extend your branding that you've worked so hard to establish um, and, and get out there. And it's also a great way to boost your cause with your stakeholders, yeah. your board members, your committee members, your volunteers. They feel another sense of pride when they see your organization in the news, if you will. And whether that's earned media or you know an arrangement like a media partnership, like we're talking about today. Okay, I love that you use a word and I would love for earned media. Before I ask you the next question, and I have so many questions, I just gotta warn you. Will you define earned media for us? Sure, earned media is when um, you reach out to a media outlet with, and you're pitching a story. Something has happened at your organization that is amazing news. You've received a you know, really significant grant that was a very competitive process. You have a volunteer that has accomplished, you know, 10,000 hours yeah. or something yeah. like that. And you, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're doing a little campaign to, to um, surprise or celebrate them. You have an amazing celebrity coming to um, perform at your event and you, and get that out. The old way was a press release, right? And people used to sit at fax machines and fax out press releases. True, it's true. The new way and what we try, you know, we actually kind of do a little handholding with organizations that are not used to pitching stories, show them how to do it with us and then say, take that same exercise and go reach out to other companies. I, we can't do it all. We, we love being first. We love, um, you know, being the one to, to help teach these things. But um, so, so you get that information out to a writer, a producer, and they do a story and you didn't pay for anything that is earned media. Yeah. I love it. And you know, it's such a powerful thing. It can be a little frightening because you don't always have control and there are some tips and tricks that you can do. We've talked about it on the nonprofit show a lot. Like how do you help the reporting team cover you, cover you accurately? And what are some of those tools? But um, that's for another day because those are, that's a huge discussion. It is. That's a whole nother show. It's a whole nother ball of wax, sister. (laughs) Hey, I want to ask you, um, how are you valuing your media partnerships? And what does that look like? I mean, you're you're not going to make a a business decision to give up valuable real estate resources, time and energy on something and not have it be a value. What is it that is a value to you? Yeah, we only have a very few slots where we're able to do this, both um, financially as well as um, entities and other organizations that are, you know, qualified to um, really do something that benefits both parties equally. That's what I'm after. The give and the get um, are, are, it's fair. It's yeah. fair for both. And, and it's a big win for both parties. Yeah. And um, so a few things that we look for when, when discussing a, a media partnership, we need really great content. We need things that when we get them up on our website, we know, you know, that the clicks are going to come. This is, this is, this is great material. This is something, you know, our readers want, um, are going to want to consume and um, click away. Um, we also want stories that are not being told by other media outlets. Right. They are right in our wheelhouse. And, you know, every media company, you can figure out pretty easily what they're, what they're after. So um, we are looking for things at the core are, they're not only giving back, but they're just, it's a really awesome, notable, you know, story. Um, and then the, one of the biggest things, um, you need to have a plan for photos and or B-roll video to come with um, your pitch to, to, you know, have a media partnership with, um, again, whether it's a TV station, a newspaper, a magazine, um, those things are needed and they're, and they need to be really good quality. Otherwise the whole thing's going to flop and, and um, going to be disappointing for all parties involved. I love that you brought that up because I would say in my media career, 
that's been something that has really changed. Um, and back in the day, when you were still a high school cheerleader and I was an, an adult, <laughs> you know, if you if you moved forward with B-roll or images, you know, a lot of media outlets would be like, no, we take our own and right. we can't do that. And and boy, has it swung for so many reasons. Again, we could talk about that and for another couple hours. But if you don't have those tools and if you haven't invested in them, and I loved that you brought up the, the caliber of what those files are, that they're properly identified, that they're properly sized and usable, you are not going to get the consideration. And again, you know, we're helping teach as well yeah. because we are a community publication, a media company. And so, again, we're saying we need this, but you need to do it all the time. It's for you to have. You should be using it on your social media and on your website and your e-newsletters as well. It's once something's published, you know, even if it's an exclusive partnership, it's still yours. Um, and, and it's valuable. It's very valuable. Well, I, I, I'm super appreciative that you said that. Cause I feel like I preached on that morning, noon, and night. So to have an expert come in and and tell us that yay team. Okay, now this is the next thing that I think a lot of people are going to be really surprised by your answer. How far in advance are media partnerships secured? Like what, what works for you and what are you looking for? We are really looking at six to nine months. Okay. And here in um, the Phoenix area, you know, we're wrapping up our social season. We don't have much of a, a, a um, community activity in the summer because of the heat here. And um, so I am actually already in discussions with both um, a renewal of a media partnership that is in November, as well as a new partnership that would be in late January. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I only have so many slots. So I am in those negotiations right now. And, and that'll be it. The slots will be gone uh, for next, for 2022-23 season. You really need to, if you want it, you've got to go get it early and show that you're organized and that you have your ducks in a row. So part and parcel to that, I've got two questions. Um, how are you with exclusivity? Like, how do you manage that? And then do you ever do like a multi-year partnership or do you start all over? I mean, and say, okay, you know, the, now... The, the editorial calendar is opening up and we're going to place it out. I mean, how do you kind of leverage those two, those two ideas? Sure. Uh, we love exclusivity. And actually, as our company has grown and our readership has grown, that is um, what we are requesting of um, organizations that are uh, requesting. And sometimes exclusivity for us means we're the exclusive print publication and you know, we're okay that there's also an exclusive television um, right. station as well. So um, <laughs> we're, we're going to be exclusive in our area. And if they're big enough and savvy enough to, you know, have other media partners uh, with other platforms, you know, that's great. Just again, communicate. It's a relationship right. Right. and let everybody know who all is involved so that we can, um, we can promote each other as well right. uh, as media partners. And um the exclusivity, it's, it's, it's strength. It, that's a strength to the partnership. That means, you know, you really are partners in what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's promoting an event or a giving campaign. And we, Julia, we, we put it all in a, a contract in a document. Yeah. Yeah. and that document says, you know, front doors media is going to accomplish the following items and XYZ organization is going to do the following. And that way everybody has their checklist and um, whether it's weekly check-ins, monthly check-ins, um, countdown to the, the big day, um, everybody knows what's expected and what's gonna happen. And then we do a review once the event is over. Okay. Um, and so all the, um, the media partnerships have been on a, you know, knock it out of the park on year one, if it's a new deal uh -huh. and then, um, discuss what you know was a hit if anything was a miss new areas that we didn't think of because it was our first time working together mm -hmm. and um and is it a 
is it a renewable you know, contract or was it a one-time deal and the relationship's going to change? I've had both. Interesting. Do you ever ask for um, uh, contact information for, like, say, people on the guest list? Or, I mean, you are a media company and you're trying to uh, build your subscriber base. What does that look like? And, and how do those conversations go? Absolutely. Um, when that That is what is our benefit from a media partnership. It's a it's an opportunity to grow our brand and our viewership and subscriber base. Mm -hmm. um, so when there is actual you know guests and tracking mechanisms, yes, those people are all then invited to become um, subscribers. And it's a you know the way we do it. They could opt out. You know we're not forcing anybody to do anything. But it is definitely something that um, in our uh, what we do in, as a publisher, um, we're interested in inviting um, people that are part of the organization that we work with to become um, a permanent <laughs> part of our of our DNA um, right. and mentors for right. sure. Well, and I think it, it goes kind of back to one of the things that you said um, earlier, and that is is that you know stakeholders and people in the community feel better about their relationship when they see those stories and when they see those things coming back um, and, and featuring them. Um, I know you do a lot of social coverage. Um, obviously, that's one of the cornerstones of what you do, including photo galleries, things of that nature. Um, and this is somewhat of a curveball, but can you talk to us about how you like to work with nonprofits, whether they're a partner, a media partner with you or not, but just how sharing those galleries or getting those images from events and what that looks like? Yeah, and we're actually, um, we're finding that during COVID, there's been a lot of um, changes in the staff and we have a lot of new people that we are working with when it comes to covering events. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, here's a few things that we do. So um, A, the calendar that I mentioned before, that is where we make the arrangement that we are being okay. invited to cover the event mm -hmm. and um, that somebody from our team is um, being invited to be present. Um, sometimes we can't get to everything, but okay. we, we just, we're not going to do a photo gallery if we're not invited to do so. Okay. Good. And so if somebody wants to stay, you know, private and, and not do that, that's, that's fine. We, we make it as clear as possible as we could, can uh, what the arrangement is. Mm -hmm. And then afterward, we work with that, usually the same person that we started with on the calendar entry. And, um, uh, and let me back up a second. In the calendar entry, there's also a, um, please send me information about advertising our event. Mm -hmm. You can pay, you know, a fee to be um, your event to be published in our newsletter. You can pay for a banner ad to be added to our website. You could pay for um, an ad to be in the magazine. So again, it really is this giant checklist of options um, to, in order to say, no, you're invited to, to any and all of these things, depending on what your budget is and what you're, what you're after. Events that are $1,000 a person that, you know, they don't need that. Those are, those are high level, you know, donor relationships. But, you know, a food tasting event for $150 for a VIP ticket, $100, you know, for a festival ticket, that those things sell online, you know, like crazy, that that's a really good, um, you know, lead for us. Um, and then we attend the event if we can, like I said, and it's our honor to do so. And I do introduce myself to the photographer and say, we're looking forward to using your, your photos. Yeah. And then we really prompt the organization to go through and pick out those best photos, the most okay. flattering photos of the people that really made the event a su success or the campaign a success. Okay. We want their event chairs. We want their board of directors, um, chairman and members. We, if there was an awesome entertainer, of course, you know, a photo of them or, or the honoree. But we also say, don't put the same people in all this, all the photos. Right, exactly. A good gallery has the best photo of each of these elements. And so this year we're adding a shot list to our, our package that once we receive an event invitation and we say, you know, thank you, 
we've noticed there's so many new younger people involved in the process where we say, here's the shot list for you, whoever's staffing the photographer, this is what's going to make your coverage shine. You know? I love it. I love it. And I think, um, you know, not only are you helping your publishing team and staff to get, you know, better results and to build, you know, the credibility and the excitement of your award-winning publication, but you're helping that nonprofit get really great coverage exactly. that, that lasts so long, especially, I mean, I know you do, you know, your beautiful print work, but at the core of it, this is a digital uh, world. And so those things last, they're searchable. I mean, they, they continue to have a shelf life. That's And they get shared on social media because yeah. somebody will be proud yeah. that their friend, you know, yeah. was the chairman or the honoree of an event and away right. it goes on, you know, Facebook and Insta and we, I love it. it's all tied back to us. And I love it. It's a win-win. Love- it's a win-win. It is a win-win. Well, wow. It, you know, it's hard to believe that our time is coming to a draw This has been amazing. I want to make sure to share Andrea's contact information. Andrea, I'm so proud of you. Hard to believe front doors, 20 years, um, really an amazing journey that you've taken and the things that you do in our community make a difference. And you might not always see that, but um, I see it and I know how remarkable your work is. And I also know how hard your work is. So I thank you for what you do. Well, thank Um, you, Julia, for being um, one of our biggest cheerleaders. You know how much I treasure that. And again, uh, all these little pearls of wisdom, challenge your publications in your communities, please, to um, do this type of coverage. But you could give it to them, you know, in a way that makes it very easy for them to say yes to you. Right, right. You know, I used to say all the time, I have to say no far more than I get to say yes, because there's just so much. But when there are two things going on, people that, and missions that I really believe in, it's easier to say yes. And when you help us along that journey, you give us information, you give us ideas, um, and they're not the same as what everybody else is getting. It's a little bit more unique or a little bit more of an insight in a certain direction. That's magical. And that's when things get done. So I love that you are marching in that direction. Hey, check out frontdoorsmedia.com. It's just an amazing resource. I think there are a lot of things uh, to learn about what's going on in a vibrant uh, philanthropic community. We are blessed to have that um, here where we are, but it is something that we work on. And it is something that people like Andrea Evans and her team uh, work on and cultivate for us each day. So thank you so much, my friend. Again, I'm Julia Patrick. Tomorrow you will be back uh, with us and Jarrett Ransom, who has been at the AFP Icon Awards doing our very first live remote from Vegas. So we'll get to hear about how that went and some of the lessons learned from there. Again, I want to thank all of our presenting sponsors, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, the Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and the Nonprofit Atlas. Without these sponsors, we would not be here. And so we are very, very grateful. Hey, Andrea, my friend, thank you for this time. I know you have a busy world and I am grateful that you would share with us today. No, thanks for having me, Julia, and um, I love to ransom to to Jared as well, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for uh, your awesome Friday show. Well, thank you. We will be there, and as we like to end every episode, we want to remind everyone and ourselves, stay well so you can do well. Do well.